we're now going to talk about the transmission of sound. So we know that an object needs to have mass and elasticity to be, create a sound, and it must also have mass and elasticity to transmit a sound. We're going to use a tuning fork as an example to help explain this phenomenon of sound creation and sound transmission. So a tuning fork is a U-shaped metal bar. It has both mass and it has elasticity. Equilibrium is its position at home. It's its home position before the force is applied. You bang the tuning fork, you apply a force. The amount of force you apply will determine how far the tines spread out or spread in. The tines will reach a maximum displacement. Motion will momentarily stop. Then, because of that restoring force of elasticity, the motion will go back and continue and the tines will return towards equilibrium. But the tines will not stop at equilibrium. They will not stop at their home base because of inertia, because of Newton's first law of inertia. All bodies that remain at rest stay at rest unless the force acts at them. All bodies in motion tend to stay in motion unless a net force acts upon them. So inertia will keep those tines moving through equilibrium until they reach maximum displacement in the opposite direction. Then motion will momentarily halt, it will change directions, and the tines will head back towards equilibrium. So if you remember Newton's first law of motion, and we probably remember this from high school, the amount of inertia that an object has is directly proportional to the mass of an object. A massive object, such as a steel ball, has more inertia than a ping pong ball. The ping pong ball can more easily be set into motion, have its motion stopped, or have the direction of the motion changed. Imagine you're crossing a busy street. Do you want a massive truck coming at you? Or a very less, very little mass Prius? I think I would rather have the Prius coming at me because I know that because the Prius has less mass, it has less inertia, and it would be able to stop more easily than a massive truck with a lot of inertia. So inertia is proportional to the mass of an object. Going back to our tuning forks, they're at equilibrium initially, so they haven't moved. A force is applied to them, an external force. You put that force on very hard, the tines will be maximally displaced a great distance. But the restoring force of elasticity is going to say, stop, get back to equilibrium. At equilibrium, the force of inertia is going to say, hold on, keep on going. And the tines will go through equilibrium to maximum displacement in the opposite direction. And then the restoring force of elasticity will say, no, 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 come back, come back to equilibrium. And the tines motion will momentarily halt as they change direction and head back to the equilibrium. So you're going to have this interaction of these two opposing forces, elasticity and inertia, elasticity and inertia, and the tines will move back and forth, and the fork is set into vibratory motion. A sound is created. So you have two opposing forces, the, re the restoring force of elasticity and the force of inertia. And this is consistent with Newton's third law of motion. With every force, there must be associated an equal reaction force in the opposite direction. So when you use a hammer to strike a nail, all that force that you're putting on that nail is coming right back to your hand. So sometimes if you bang a hammer and a nail really hard, your hand hurts. Because all that force that you're putting onto that nail and onto that board is coming right back to your hand. With every force, 
there's an associated equal reaction force in the opposite direction. It's Newton's third law. So if I push my hand on the desk, my hand is distorted, the desk is pushing right back up in my hand, but elasticity returns it to its original shape. A force cannot exist alone. There are no one-man tug-of-wars. Elasticity is the restoring force of inertia. And eventually, the restoring force wins. The tines stop moving back and forth, and they go back to their equilibrium, their home base.